Lord. We glorify your name and we honor you, God. We open up our mouth and sing praises unto you, oh God. Come on and worship him today. Come on and praise him. Open up your mouth and give him praise. He's so worthy. You're so worthy. Thank you, Father. Come on. Oh, yes, we praise you, Lord. God is fighting for us. God is on our side. He has overcome. Yes, He has overcome. We will not be shaken. We will not be moved. Jesus, you are here.
Hey, welcome out, Impact family. So good to see you on another Wednesday night. Let me give a special shout out again to our South Florida Impact Church of South Florida family, as well as all the family throughout the state of Florida, Georgia, Michigan, Jersey. You know who you are in other parts of the country as well. As a matter of fact, got a shout out just the other week from somebody watching from Kenya. He was just like, I am locked in. I said, well, come on, man. Let's go get it. Praise God. So people are being able to be blessed by God's word and being reminded of how much God loves them and the awesome plan that he has for all of our lives. Listen, we want to continue on what I was dealing with on last week about how to conquer the things that try to control us. Listen, there, there's been a whole lot taking place, you know, within this global pandemic, you know, different uh, rise of, of drug abuse, alcohol abuse, domestic abuse, human sex trafficking and the like. And we want to make sure that we are keeping a guard over our lives so that we don't allow issues and vices is now to become addictions and become uh, extremely destructive behaviors that are damaging not only to us but to our families and others that we love as well. So let's pray and then we're going to kind of get into part two right here right now. Father we thank you so much for your continued love and your presence. Thank you again daddy for your word that is a lamp into our feet and a light into our pathway. I trust you father for freedom of utterance in the Holy Spirit words that are live, explosive, dynamic, undeniable that comes directly from you that my speech, preaching, and teaching will not be with enticing words of men's wisdom, but in demonstration of your spirit and your power. We thank you for this and give you praise now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, praise God. All right, let's look at something here just by way of quick review. When, when you start talking about um, this whole matter of addiction and destructive behaviors, I want to remind you of 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 12. It says, everything is permissible, allowable, and lawful for me. This is what Paul is saying here. He says, but not all things are helpful, good for me to do, expedient and profitable when considered with other things. Everything is lawful for me, but I will not become the slave of anything or be brought under his power. So, yeah, it may be OK to do this and it may be OK to do that. But when that thing is starting to, to cause you to become a slave to it, when it's bringing you under his power, you want to put a check on that. You, you want to resist that. As a matter of fact, you want to extricate yourself from that and Paul understood he says yeah all things may be lawful for me he says but all things are not necessarily expedient or profitable again I want to encourage you always ask yourself the question how does what I'm looking at what I'm thinking about doing you know what what I'm thinking about getting involved in what I'm who I'm thinking about doing this that and the other with how does this satisfy my Heavenly Father and how does it impact and influence his plan and purpose for my life? Let, let that be one of the staple questions that you always come back to, especially when you are confronted with some type of temptation. I remember addictions, Crawford definition I, I'll give you here, you know, again, uh, very quickly, is an out of control compulsive need or craving for something. An out of control compulsive need or craving for something uh, and, and typically it doesn't have to be something bad I mean you can have an addiction you know where caffeine is, is concerned you you can have an addiction where some person is concerned and, and I mean the person obviously is not bad but if you have an addiction where, where you have this now out of control compulsive need or craving for them then, then that now has become a very destructive thing in your life so be mindful of that there's a lot of things we can look at and begin to talk about when it comes to uh, destructive behaviors and things that can become addictions but again this is not for the purpose of trying to bring any sense of condemnation and trying to say aha yeah th that that's you or that's what you're dealing with listen be honest with yourself if there's something that's there apply this apply this like medicine you know today so that you free yourself up praise God remember this process into addiction number one is is appealing there's some kind of appeal that's made to you. Number two, once that appeal is there, it's trying to get your attention. 
Once the attention is there, it's trying to establish an attraction. Once the attraction is there, it's looking to set up this affection in your heart. Once that affection is there, then now an attachment winds up taking place. And once the attachment takes place, now the, the ground is ripe for an addiction to be able to spring forth you know, in your life. And that can be extremely deadly. So be careful of that process. And when you see things starting to pull you in that direction, stand up against it. Now, let, let's deal with this. I want to give you several, several things now that you can begin to apply to ex, uh, uh, extricate yourself, uh, uh, you know, remove yourself from urges, uh, addictions, and things that are destructive habits and behaviors that try to show up. So let, let's begin. I'm going to give you several. I'm not even going to give you a number. I'm just going to just let them roll off, praise God. Now, the first two I gave you on last week, and I even mentioned it again, you've got to be honest with yourself. If you're going to deal with things, you're going to conquer, you know, things that are trying to control you, you have to be honest with yourself. You, you, you cannot fake it. You're like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm fine in this area. But secretly, you're kind of dealing with this, that, and the other. Come on, be honest with yourself. And, and now, once, once you're honest with yourself, now God can get to you truth. And once God gets to you truth, the truth will do what it does, and that is make you free. But you can't get that truth when you're wrapped up and bound in self-deception and not being honest. Second was separate yourself from what or who was attempting to pull you into a destructive, you know, uh, behavior, trying to pull you into some type of, you know, addiction. Here it is now, you don't drink, but every time you hang with this particular person, they make it their mission trying to get you to drink. He's just like, no, nah, no, nah, I'm not trying to do that. But but they're not going to be satisfied. It's just like they're not happy the whole night until they can get you to drink and hopefully they can get you drunk so that then they can talk about you. Listen, you got to separate yourself, you know, from influences like that yeah i know that's your friend you love him you love her i get that but but at the same token now you got to be able to protect yourself to say whoa whoa i, I got to create a little separation for a minute so i can keep strengthening myself and then i'll come back and help you and now that's that's brotherly love that's looking out for your girl there so make sure you're honest with yourself and you separate yourself from what is attempting to pull you in a destructive direction separate yourself from what or who third one is this admit that you have a problem and prepare to fight Come on now, admit that you have a problem and prepare to fight. Now, if you're being honest with yourself, then admitting things, you know, shouldn't be a problem. Admit that you have the problem and prepare yourself to fight. And listen, I'm not necessarily even talking about you just admitting it to yourself, you know, in private. I mean, that's, that's fine, but sometimes you need to admit it to someone else so that you can be held accountable to what you're, you're dealing with. And But again, don't just simply admit it from a sense of guilt and like, oh my goodness, I'm I'm, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm struggling with this. No, 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 no. Don't, don't do it that way. Do it from the standpoint of, yeah, this is something I've been dealing with. I want to let you in on it so that, watch this, we can share in the victory together. Come on, because I'm going to fight. And when I fight, this is how you ought to be thinking, I always win, praise God. The weapons of our warfare, they're not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. So when we use these weapons, when we fight by faith, then we come out as victors every single day time praise God so keep this in mind what you see in Proverbs chapter 28 verse 13 it says this he who keeps his sins secret will not do well but one who is open about them and gives them up will get mercy oh yeah you understand that he he who keeps his sins secrets you're not gonna do well it says but the one who is open about them gives the, and gives them up will get mercy message translation i like it it says this you can't whitewash your sins and get by with it you find mercy by admitting and leaving them Man, that's good you can't whitewash you know how it is sometimes we, we we try to make it seem like well that that wasn't as bad that wasn't as bad as what you did or or what this person did you know try, trying to whitewash it and minimize it. it says no you can't do that you get the mercy, though, by admitting it and then leaving it. So be sure that you admit that you have the problem and prepare to fight. Here's the next one. Use the word of God as your rock. I cannot, I cannot, I cannot overstress this. You must use God's word as the rock. Listen, praise God for all of the education that's available, you know, in our society. 
I am a proponent of education. You know, get as much a- as you like. But philosophies and psychology and the like is not the same as the living word of God. You have to have God's word as the bedrock if you want to be able to break free from any kind of destructive behaviors, things that may have set up in your family as generational curses at this point. You got to use God's word. Notice again what it says here in 2 uh, Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. It says, all scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. That's what God's word does. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. Come on now. God's using his word to prepare and equip us to do every good work. So that means if we don't have God's word, we're not properly prepared and we're not properly equipped. So you got to make sure you're using his word as the bedrock, praise God. That's how you break free from destructive behaviors. Now, the next one, depend upon the Holy Spirit as your strength. Now, now listen, this is absolutely vital. A lot of times you, you can you can feel like I can do it in my own willpower. You know, I I I I, I consider myself a, a, to be a very kind of, you know, disciplined and determined individual. And and now if I don't watch it, that can get out of balance, you know, where you begin to feel like, you know, all I got to do is rely upon my my perseverance and, and my discipline. No, 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 no. It's not by power. It's not by might. But it's by the spirit of the living God. There, there's going to be some things. Listen, there's going to be some things you and I, we are not going to break free from. And we're not going to break free into without the spirit of the living God. And we have to make sure that we can continue to rest and rely upon him. And, and listen, listen, you know, don't 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 get, you know, mixed up on things as well. You need the spirit of God. And I'm talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the Bible evidence of speaking in other tongues. You need that to be a force and a presence in your life. Listen, that is the secret sauce. That is the game changer for believers in the earth today. And that's how you really rely upon the Holy Spirit. So you want to break free from stuff? There, there's been some issues that's, that's been, you know, plaguing you so forth. Maybe nobody else knows about it. Come on now. Get closer to the Holy Spirit and he will break you free. Matter of fact, I got news for you. You've already been broken free. You're already free already free so go ahead and enjoy your freedom now the next one is this establish safe boundaries and borders in the challenging area of your life establish safe boundaries and establish safe borders in the challenging areas of your life for 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 myself before i was uh, married and I'm, I'm, I'm a single man, I'm, I'm trying and I'm doing the best I can not to get involved sexually with somebody I'm not married to. I know that's God's heart. And I understand that it's God's heart because it was his best for me not to do that and to get the most out of uh, marriage and relationship, you know, by coming together, you know, sexually just in marriage. So I'm single and I'm trying to, to do this. And so there's individuals now I'm dating and, and so forth. And, and I just came to a place, you know, where I said, you know what, you know, kissing and, and so forth. That's that's just no good for me. Not not that I didn't want to kiss, you know, the, these individuals, but I understood that you know what you you begin to kind of start up the motor you kind of want to go someplace come on come on can anybody talk to me out there or are y'all gonna look at me real holy tonight come on you want to go someplace and I already knew that I can't go there I'm not gonna go there I I, I don't want to do this and, and hurt the heart of God so so my boundaries and borders said you know what I'm just I'm just not gonna kiss I, I remember one young lady I was, was talking to early on and I was expressing this uh, position, you know, to her. And she just looked at me like, well, you are crazy. She said, that's good for you, but that, that ain't good for me. The relationship was done in that moment right then. I said, okay, that'll be that. Because I understood now that she was already, as soon as I wasn't feeling, you know, my, my strongest, or oh, she was going to be trying me. I didn't need anybody like that. Didn't need, did not need, did not want someone that was then going to try to pull me away from God's plan and purpose for my life but that comes when you establish some good safe boundaries and borders let me give you the next one focus on one day at a time 
and reward yourself regularly. Come on now. See, a lot of times, you know, part of the problem, how you kind of slip back into things, is you don't have a good reward system. You beat yourself up because, well, I didn't do this right. I didn't do that right. So on and so forth. Come on. Plan in there and put in there some rewards for yourself. Here it is now. You're working on maybe losing, you know, weight. Come on now. You you had a goal for 20 pounds. Come on now. You you you, you lost five pounds. Come on, reward yourself. You uh, li listen, listen. You can have that piece of cake. Go ahead. You can go ahead and eat that piece of cake. Reward yourself. Now just one slice and don't make it too big. But reward yourself and then watch this. Get right back in there and let's go again and let's get another five pounds. Have some rewards built in there. It will help you. You know, trust me. It'll be a nice motivation to you. But focus is one day at a time. Remember what Matthew chapter six verse thirty four says. It says, "Don't be anxious about tomorrow. God will take care of your tomorrow too. Live one day at a time." Man, I love that. Now, that doesn't mean you don't plan for the future. Clearly, you do. But but what God was talking about here is that don't don't get you know into worrying about you know tomorrow. He says, just just come on, just trust me. I got your tomorrow. You don't have to worry about a thing. Here's the next one. Starve the addiction or behavior of any attention. Starve it. Starve it. Starve it. Shut it off. There, there's times periodically throughout the, the, the year that I, I will shut off, you know, all sports. Because, you know, I, I, I love, you know, competition. You know, so, so for me, that thing can start to pull me in. So periodically, I'd have to shut it off. So now during this whole global pandemic, obviously for months, we didn't have any sports. Man, people were, were jonesing, you know, looking for things. I think that one uh, show uh, that ESPN, you know, uh, did, you know, where, you know, the Bulls were concerned, that thing probably was, you know, so high rated because people were just looking for some type of semblance of, of sports, praise God. But by that time, I was, I was completely free from it. Matter of fact, even right now, I mean, I like basketball and so forth, but man, Man, if all them leagues, you know, shut down tomorrow, I will be okay, ladies and gentlemen, because those things don't define you or me. But if you want to destroy something and kill something, you want to make sure you starve the addiction, shut it off. When, once that happens, now things begin to subside on the inside. Let me give you a few more because I got them. Change your thinking about the habit. Now, where this addiction or destructive behavior, the habit is concerned, change your thinking about it. Always keep this in mind that the situation is not hopeless and it's not impossible. And a lot of times I know our thinking will try to tell us that. And unfortunately, we can have some family members and friends and so forth that try to tell us that as well. But it's not impossible. It's certainly not impossible for God. And, and the mindset you want to have is this. God through Christ already defeated the power of this thing over my life. God through Christ defeated the power of this. Pornography, alcohol, drugs, whatever the case may be. God through Christ already defeated the power of it. So change your mentality towards it and recognize this thing is already a defeated foe in my life. I have already won. Jesus has already provided me the victory here. Change your thinking towards it from, you know, being a place of, of victimhood to now the victor in it. Praise God. Yeah, absolutely. Then the next one is this. Don't give in to the guilt and shame. Sometimes, you know, as you're going through this process and you're trying to work through, you know, living in a full state of freedom, you know, from something. And then maybe you had a slip up or whatever the case may be. Guilt and shame tries to creep up in there. Throw that out. Praise God. Do not allow yourself to get drawn into guilt and and shame because God's not mad at you as a matter of fact he's cheering you on praise God to live your best life yet with him praise God so don't allow guilt and shame to try to come in and suffocate your dreams away the next one is this get someone else involved in your victory man I love this Get someone else involved in your victory. We talked about it a little bit earlier. You, you want to become accountable to someone else. And listen, you want to become accountable to someone else that has shown strength in the area that you're struggling with. I, I'm, I am always amazed how, the, how sometimes the, the people that people become accountable to are struggling with the same thing that they're struggling with. It's like, that's not, that's not who you want to be accountable to. I mean, okay, y'all can encourage each other, but you need somebody, watch this, that's a little bit stronger than you on this. Listen, 
You go to the gym, you know, all my fitness buffs out there know, and you want to put, you know, some some plates, you know, on there to do some bench pressing. Listen, you you don't you don't want the twelve year old kid that's weighing eighty six pounds to come spot for you. No, no, no. You want somebody probably preferably as least as strong and, and prefer, preferably stronger than you are to kind of spot you so that you don't hurt yourself. Well, that's the kind of accountability you need. And that means, listen, that means you have to humble yourself. That means you have to humble yourself because a lot of times we don't like this relationship because it, it looks like this. It looks like they're here and I'm here. And, and, and here's the reality. In, in this particular case, in this particular situation, that is the case. And that's what you need because they then can help bring you up to where you want to be. Don't don't be intimidated or insecure that, well, you know, this seems like it's putting me in a, a, a lower position. Come on. Swallow the pride and embrace the help that you need. Praise God. That's good stuff right there. Now, last, last few. Live a fasted lifestyle. Pr prayer is always going to be key. But live a fasted lifestyle. You know, fasting is, is something when done properly really helps to control the urges in your life. The things that try to pull you off, you know, in different directions. Not too long ago, obviously last month, we had 21 days of prayer and fasting. And, and, and when you give yourself into fasting, you know, on a regular basis, things that were a struggle and, and maybe a strong temptation, those things wind up now diminishing on the inside of your heart. They, they, they don't have the same volume you know, in, in your life because you know how to fast. And listen, you don't have to wait. We, fa we fast as a church typically twice a year, but you don't have to wait for that. You can fast any time you like. You, you can make it a point to fast you know, uh, one day out of the week. Or maybe there's a half a day that, hey, I'm going to fast and this is time that I'm just kind of drawing up you know, close to God as I can. Allow Him to energize you. Live a fasted lifestyle. Next is this, help someone else experience victory over their challenge. So while you're dealing with your thing, while you're trying to get to the place where you are living in, you know, a full-fledged freedom in it, turn and find somebody right in the midst of all that. Find someone who may be dealing with something, maybe it's completely different than you. And watch this, and where you may be stronger, watch this, where you're this up here and they're here, you come along and you come in and be a blessing and help them. I, I never forget now, you know, you find it over in Job chapter 42, verse, verse 10. Here it is, Job, you know, has gone through a horrendous season of his life. But then it says this, the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Job's captivity turned. Everything shifted when, when Job, watch this, decided now to help someone else experience victory over the challenges that they were having. Yeah. Don't let, you know, this circumstance make you become selfish. And then lastly is this. Make a new path where the old one existed. Make a new path. When, when you have a destructive pattern, a destructive way of thinking, a bit of an addiction and so forth, then create a new path where that old one, you know, existed. So if, if it's a case now where, um, man, you know, you, you're spending, you know, X amount of hours on social media uh, looking at things that just not healthy for you, then, then you know, back up then and say, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm creating a new path where that old one existed. So that same time that I was doing that, now I'm going to use that time, watch this, to, to uh, have some time with God. Um, I'm, I'm going to develop a devotion, you know, for my family, you know, each week. Uh, I'm going to, you know, do some exercise. Come on, you, you're creating a new path to, to now replace the old path where you were kind of, you know, had this idle time time and it was taking you this direction now you're filling that time with some productive things so that you don't go back down that road praise God hallelujah God is good unto us and he wants to see us live free free indeed whom the son sets free is free indeed listen I'm going to end right here in, in uh, Colossians chapter 1 verse 10 please catch a hold of this tonight it says then uh, the way you live will always honor and please the Lord. That's, that's, that's our heart. The way that we live will always honor and please the Lord. And your lives will produce every kind of good fruit. That's my prayer for you. That your lives, my life, will produce every kind of good fruit. All the while, you will grow as you learn to know God better and better. 
that is my heart and my prayer for you, that you continue to grow as, as you uh, know God better and better, praise God, that you're producing every kind of good fruit and that you're living a life that brings honor and that brings glory and that pleases God. Father, we thank you again for your continued presence. May we continue to be strengthened, Father, to overcome every vice, every uh, addiction, every challenge and destructive behavior that tries to come up against us and, and to pull us out of the center of your will. We say we shall not yield to it. We shall not come under its control. We yield unto you, Father, and we trust you to lead and guide us into victory in all things so that we are always enjoying your freedom. Thank you so much for this now. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Listen, I'm glad you're with me. Remember this now. This Sunday is Homecoming Sunday. So if you haven't already registered, go to the website. There may still be some space. Hope to see you on Sunday. We're only doing the one service right now, and that's at 8.30 a.m. Unless something changes, and if so, we'll let you know. We'll put it out on social media. Be blessed and have an awesome evening. Talk to you soon. Bye.